Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Bartosz and I work as a Java developer uh, for uh, BGK or Bank Gospodarstwa Krajowego, which is a national development bank, uh, the only one in Poland actually. And uh, I would like to showcase uh, you uh, quite a powerful tool, which is a Hibernate Search that allows you to integrate your uh, normal ORM with uh, no SQL database. And uh, during the presentation, I will uh, show you some mm, theoretical stuff, and then we'll get uh, to code, and I'll show you how to set up an environment and to use it in just a few steps. So, oh, and if you have any questions at all, I think there is not uh, a lot of us, so I think you can just speak up and ask me anything during the presentation. And uh, if I feel that I run out of time, then I'll just let you know. So, okay, let's get down to it. Okay. Okay. Or is it my computer? Okay. Uh, okay, so let's start with problems, as always. Uh, what problems does Hibernate Search solve? Uh, the main one is actually full text searching. Uh, let's assume that you have a standard web application, Spring Boot, for example, with a SQL database uh, at the back end, and, um, well, you, your client uh, wants you to implement a feature in which uh, a user uh, could um, search uh, some phrases in a large pool of data. Uh, let's just assume that you have a bookstore and you have to implement uh, something like searching by reviews. Like you, you would like to search some specific phrases uh, in uh, reviews which may be hundreds, thousands or anything. And you would still like to keep your SQL uh, database, not uh, migrate to no SQL database. Uh, then the, it's a tool just for you. And it allows, as I said, full text searching, but also analysis of the data stored in your database. Uh, that means uh, character filters, tokenization, and normalization are the most important features. And let's get to it. Um, so, for example, you store something like this in your database, and you would like to use full text search, um, then it wouldn't be um, wise to use something like uh, like statement. Uh, and what would you like to do to, is to remove uh, some characters that are unnecessary. For example, like here, uh, we have a strong um, in parentheses, which is not something we should be concerned about during search. So yeah, we remove it. Uh, we should then probably tokenize it so it is uh, easier to search in large pool of data and at last we should uh, normalize this data, get rid of, of all uh, special characters and uh, to uh, get rid of all words that are uh, just unimportant uh, during the search, like eh, the, and, uh, and so on and so on. And of course, you could uh, do most of it in uh, SQL databases. I know that uh, full text searching and some uh, analyzing capabilities are implemented in MSSQL, but as you will see later, this approach may be more beneficial to you than just uh, yeah, banging your head uh, uh, in the wall with uh, traditional SQL database. Uh, yeah, and yeah, the default analyzers uh, in uh, Hibernate Search uh, tokenize and uh, the input according to the word break rules of Unicode text, uh, segmentation algorithm. Uh, it's just something out of the box, and uh, yeah, it out of the box normalizes tokens uh, by turning them lowercase. 
and you can do much, much more with that, and yeah, we'll see what. Um, this is an example uh, how, wh what would you like to achieve, like uh, we have um, some presentations, for example, with descriptions, and someone searches uh, presentations on Hibernate and on uh, our company, BGK. Uh, then we can uh, search Hibernate BGK, and uh, if we implement everything as we want, we would get uh, a re result list like this. That is, uh, and even as you see, the first result isn't uh, is very special. It has three different in two different fields. It has three uh, matches. So it is first and it is also something we, we, we will be able to do with this uh, tool, Hibernate Search. So yeah, let's move on. Uh, so how does it work? Basically we tell our ORM, ORM to take care of changes both in our SQL, <laughs> SQL database and no SQL database. We extract data uh, from one, analyze it, then uh, put it in NoSQL database, and then we can uh, use all those capabilities. So, yeah. Uh, last thing, uh, we can work with uh, both Apache Lucene and Elasticsearch server, and uh, both have some pros and cons. Uh, in case of Apache Lucene, it's almost it's it changes almost immediate as you store your um, all your data, all your data uh, on a disk. In case of Elastic uh, Search, uh, changes are um, slowed by the communication overhead. So, for example, you can update something in your um, database, SQL database, and then not be able immediately retrieve it from Elastic Search, but it's almost instant. Uh, then Apache Lucene is easier to in implement. You have just one node and that's it. And in case of Elasticsearch, you have actually to set up your uh, external service. And uh, yes. Uh, but Apache Lucene uh, wouldn't be my choice in most uh, enterprise um, cases as it doesn't scale up really. You can only have one application and one node. It may be good for some small uh, applications, uh, some hobby projects. And in case of Elasticsearch, uh, uh, it is easily scalable. You can have as many nodes of your application as as many uh, Elasticsearch uh, shards or nodes as you want. And it's a feature that you wouldn't get uh, in any way from SQL database. You can uh, distribute your data among many, many shards of Elasticsearch and it is uh, really quicker. Okay, uh, what next? Uh, in both cases, uh, sadly, the, it can occur uh, the synchronization. It isn't uh, perfect, and in case of Apache Lucene, you can do nothing with it. And in case of Elasticsearch, there's actually a solution that is sadly in, still in experimental uh, state, so uh, something to have uh, at the back of your head. Uh, here is a graph that I uh, have stolen from official documentation. Uh, you have a source here. It's a very good documentation, by the way. And yeah, as I, as I said, you have uh, your, uh, in case of Lucene, you have your application, you have only have local file system that is uh, managed by Lucene engine. And in case of Elasticsearch, yeah, you can scale as much as you want. Uh, in both cases, database, it's all the same. Uh, and yeah, what's important? Yeah, what's important in case of, okay, Elasticsearch, there is also an experimental, uh, it's called, it's called uh, Outbox Polling Coordination Strategy that allows us to not to worry about any uh, desynchronization between uh, SQL database and NoSQL database. It works like that. Uh, it uh, creates uh, t some tables in your uh, data, SQL database that allow us to maintain some order in uh, updating, deleting, and everything that goes on in your application. 
Uh, but as I said, it's in experimental state, but I think it is something that is going to be uh, quite wanted and potentially not ex experimental anymore in next uh, versions. Okay, uh, so what frameworks are supported? Uh, yeah, out of the box, Spring Boot, uh, obviously the most important uh, framework uh, at the market, and the other one is Quarkus, actually. Mm, great framework, by the way. Mm, but as developers say, uh, also probably it would work with any other framework or um, any other solution that you want. You would just have to uh, check it on your own whether there are some problems or not. Probably, uh, probably no. Okay, and uh, how do we use it at the end? Uh, there are virtually five steps involved in setting up your application. It's as easy as that. Uh, first, what you have to do is, as in every uh, Spring Boot application, you would like to set create with ORM. You would like to create some uh, JPA entities, annotate them, and everything. Uh, then you have to do actual work uh, that is uh, needed to use Hibernate Search, that is adding dependencies and configuring your backend. Uh, depending on what you use, it may be um, address to Elasticsearch and password to user, whatever, or Apache Lucene. I haven't used that, so I don't know what you have to configure there. Um, third, you have to annotate uh, those entities uh, for which you want to create an index uh, with annotation index, just like that, and then uh, an index is created uh, at the startup of application inside uh, no SQL database inside, inside Elasticsearch. Mm, or your file system, of course. Uh, and then for uh, annotate your fields and clit in your index, that is uh, how your entities should be stored uh, in no SQL database. And it will be completely different from SQL um, mm, entities as it's a completely different approach to storing data. It, it, these are documents. And we used um, uh, annotation as full text field, uh, generic field indexed embedded, and keyword field. What's important, full text field is the most interesting at, as it allows us to do full text searching, uh, the one I mentioned at the beginning of uh, my presentation. Uh, generic fields are or other fields that are supported by um, uh, by uh, Hibernate Search, but are not, are, these aren't possible to tokenize and, well, they are just stored inside uh, your uh, database. You can do some queries on them, but not that much. Indexed embedded, that is if you want to embed, uh, for example, if you have a post, then you would probably uh, would like to uh, embed in a single document uh, all the comments under this post, right? And keyword field, these are, yes, rather important as well. Uh, you can um, you can normalize them, but not tokenize them, and you um, uh, and you can uh, do queries against them and uh, sort with them and do a bunch of other stuff. So yeah. Basically, full text field is the most important. And fifth, last one, write a piece of code to take care of initial indexing because it isn't automatic. You have to uh, tell uh, your application to do the indexing at the beginning, as I said, at the startup. And well, that's it. You can now start uh, writing queries uh, based on Lucene Engine. In Elasticsearch, it's also a Lucene engine, it's just under the hood. And alternatively to that approach, uh, which is uh, very convenient, you could use set up everything programmatically, it's also possible. Probably you could do more things with that, but for most use cases, I think those annotations, which are very easy, are all you need. Okay, so. Um, when you have our data inside uh, our NoSQL database, what can we do? Uh, we can do, a multi there are multiple tools at our disposal. Uh, first, querying, um, and we have, can do things like 
uh, matching, but both exact matching and fuzzy matching. What's the difference? In case of exact matching, you could um, you do it uh, basically like uh, no SQL, uh, like traditional SQL beta database. Uh, you just want to hit an exact match with a word, and if it hits, then uh, the result is returned. In case of fuzzy uh, uh, matching, then uh, you have uh, some level of freedom uh, whether it is uh, a match or not, and you can define how many letters can be different or something like that. Uh, we can have, have range of values, just like, like in SQL uh, database. We can have wild, uh, wild cards, and there, are, there is also a regex support. So, if you want some, uh, something like this, then sure, we can search for that. And what else? We can also have uh, phrase queries. I know that in Google uh, once there was this capability. I don't know whether it is still there that you can search exact. Uh, phrase and nothing else interests you. So, uh, for example, um, yeah, red fox jumped over the fence uh, and only those with exact matches uh, in exact order will uh, pop up. And at last we have simple query strings, uh, haven't used that. Uh, it's uh, it's possible to just write Lucene query and send it to the backend, um, and then you get a result as is. So you can also do that. And besides querying, we can do also sorting. Um, we can do that based on score. For example, we can have many predicates. Uh, for example, we can say that we want to match uh, uh, something, uh, some field and other field uh, with something else. And if we, if we, when we get two exact matches that we wanted, then a score would be two. Mm, in case of one, then one. And if none, then there is, uh, well, it wouldn't be returned at all. Uh, by field values and, uh, yeah, not all are allowed, as I said, for example, a full text field, uh, because it is tokenized, you can't actually sort uh, by those fields. Uh, you would, yeah, so. And what else? Um, very interesting thing, you can also, it's built in feature of uh, Hibernate Search, uh, sort by distance. So if you have some coordinates, and you can store them inside your uh, Elasticsearch. And then there are built-in methods to um, search, uh, for example, the closest uh, library or something, uh, and put them in the right order by distance. So it's quite, uh, quite fun, actually. Uh, and at last, projections, it's, um, well, it, uh, it allows us to ask NoSQL database without even involving uh, our SQL database, because usually when we ask uh, a query for, uh, to a NoSQL database, then we retrieve uh, the um, objects from SQL database as well. In this case, we only uh, get a document or even a part of a document, so it's also possible, it's quicker, and sometimes it uh, may be necessary to use. Okay, so that would be uh, everything when it comes to uh, theoretical stuff. So if you want to get familiar with the code, code that uh, I'll show you in a minute, then this is an, um, uh, my Bitbucket site, and you can check it out. I'll give you a moment to take a photo. Or... I have to update it a little because I haven't uh, been able to write uh, appropriate uh, uh, how to. So, yeah, I, but the code is there. Okay. So, five steps, as I said, and we'll use uh, 
Elasticsearch uh, engine, so we have we have to do some uh, groundwork at first. So uh, here I have okay, yeah, it, it's possible to. Here I have a Docker compose file. It's not that uh, big. We have MySQL uh, database, uh, very uh, protected database, as you see. Uh, so yeah, there's that, uh, and then we have Elasticsearch. Uh, it's important to use uh, the right version as, uh, for example, uh, Hibernate Search uh, supports version 7.17, I believe, but not 8, which is the newest one uh, just released. So yeah, it's uh, important to do the research first. Uh, okay, what else do we do? We also have Kibana just to search, um, uh, just to see whether our cluster works or not. So, cluster, not cluster. That, that's just a single note in this case. Uh, okay, so that's all. And not a lot of code. Uh, yeah, we also have some initial wife with initial data. So, we have SQL and we will create a database with. Uh, author, book, uh, book author, many-to-many -many relationship, and some reviews to books. Yeah, and we'll populate this with some uh, data. Nothing fancy here. Okay. Okay, something maybe I'll, yeah, probably better. Okay, so let's uh, do Docker Compose to get uh, things done. Yeah, this, this moment was scary. <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, something just doesn't work. Mm. At the least uh, convenient moment. Yeah, so basically that's that. Uh, there are a bunch of logs from Elasticsearch, but that's nothing wrong. Uh, only infos. Okay. So, uh, what you have to do next, what would we ha have to be doing next uh, is to create our entities. I've written the code earlier as it is not an, um, it's, not, it's not a lab. I would be too afraid to make too many mistakes uh, during that, so everything is uh, prepared. So, as you can see, we have, uh, yeah, we, we also use, uh, I also use Lombok here, we have getter setter. It's also annotated as entity, and what's important uh, is uh, indexed annotation. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, e and in this way uh, we tell uh, Hibernate Search to do this index. And here are a bunch of um, fields annotated uh, to do the indexing. And uh, we can do something like this, for example. Mm, we can annotate field twice to put it into the document in two separate ways. Uh, yeah, he, here is definition uh, which should we use, which analyzer or normalizer we should use. I'll, see, I'll show it to you in the configuration later. Uh, but what's important, one, uh, one uh, way to store this data is by uh, doing full text field and uh, another one as a, a keyword field. In this way, we can both, uh, yeah? Yeah, 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 sorry. I've made everything bigger earlier and then, uh, okay, I think in IntelliJ I can do, uh, okay. Do you know where it is? I haven't presented IntelliJ in ages. Window and then? Uh, uh, where? Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, I know that you can just uh, f 
increase font size, so I just do that. Uh, size first, and yeah, that's way, way too small. Sorry about that. 22 may be good, I think. Maybe 20. It's better, right? Can you see? OK. So uh, as I was saying, uh, we can have full text field and uh, keyword uh, word field. It's uh, very convenient. And as for example, in case of title, we would like to retrieve uh, some records by fragments of the title. And we can do this by annotating full text, it, it as full text field. But it all, we also would like to sort uh, with it, for example, alphabetically uh, from A to Z. And uh, therefore, we use keyword field. And then our document in uh, SQL a database would look uh, like you know a book and then title uh, something and then title sort here's the name uh, something something yeah and it's sortable yeah yeah I, I don't I believe I didn't have to declare it but uh, yeah okay here we have description something that is necessarily uh, important to annotate as text full, uh, full text field. And here we have embedded, uh, indexed, index embedded. Yeah, so for example, we embed reviews and authors inside the book, it, and it is the only, um, the only index we create in this application. So it's our model. Uh, and yeah, our, uh, OK. And as I said, and there uh, we have to take care of uh, init of configuration at oh, yeah. the first thing I skipped. Uh, all you have to do uh, when it comes to configuration uh, and dependencies, there are two or three dependencies. It uh, depends on how you look about it. Uh, everything else is, uh, well, MapStruck, I think that those tools are you are rather familiar with. Uh, Spring with uh, Data GPA, Spring Fox, we'll see the results uh, this way. Um, yeah, MySQL as I use MySQL server. And what's important for us, Lombok, uh, is this. Mm, that is Hibernate Search Backend Elasticsearch. As we use uh, Elasticsearch, we could also use to, uh, here uh, Lucene. Yeah. Uh, we use Hibernate Search Mapper ORM. And these are uh, mandatory, those two dependencies. And if we want to uh, make use of this experimental feature of uh, keeping our data consistent, then we have to uh, add another fair dependency, outbox polling, as I said, yeah. Uh, so this free, and that's all. Mm, and in properties, we only uh, declare where is Elasticsearch. Mm. Yeah, that, that it is Elasticsearch, that's the first one. Uh, this is a strategy, what to do with indexes. Uh, it's just like with databases, we want, we, when it's uh, in dev mode, when we usually want to drop and create. Uh, drop and create and drop means that we uh, drop any indexes at the startup of application, then create indexes based on our database, and then drop again when the application uh, ends. Of course, there are other strategies, for example, check and update, then if uh, some changes happened uh, during, for example, Elasticsearch failure um, or application failure, then we, we would just update uh, those. Okay, uh, Yuri, okay, we use localhost and analysis configurer, that thing we'll do at the end. What is it? Uh, yeah, those are, those are technical. <laughs> I haven't worked without them. <clears throat> okay, so let's get to initial uh, that initial configuration. Uh, so we have uh, implemented application runner to, or, and at the start of the application, do the indexing uh, this way. Indexing service is a service, yeah, we'll just go to because it's just, uh, yeah. And here we 
use something like mass indexer. Mass indexer uh, serves this very purpose to uh, do the mass indexing at the startup, and we can assign number of threads to uh, be consumed in this uh, case four. And yeah, we start and wait and until it ends. Mm. And that is that's it basically. Okay. And uh, okay, I can also tell something a little about our configuration, analysis configuration. Um, it's everything about how, uh, what should we do with our fields. For example, with some fields, uh, we would like uh, them only to be lowercase, and in other cases, we would like them to be as key compatible. That is, if we have something like uh, Polish on uh, strange letters, then we would like to um, change them to um, their ASCII. Uh, uh, yeah. ASCII letter, just yeah, simple letter. And uh, we can do a bunch of things here. Here are very uh, simple uh, yeah, analyzers. We say that uh, the language is English, and uh, yeah, that is a standard Elasticsearch tokenizer, and that we just want it uh, to be lowercase and ASCII. But we can do a bunch of other stuff uh, this way. So yeah, just to present that it's all possible. Uh, okay, and yeah, mm, what is the last important thing is a repository. So uh, we have a traditional JPA repository to manage our uh, SQL entities, but we also have something like uh, index search book repository. Okay, this is it's an interface. Um, in which we use Entity Manager to access to search for uh, our entities via uh, Hibernate Search uh, via uh, Lucene queries in Elasticsearch or in file system. So uh, yeah, this way we can count all indexes. Uh, we count all indexes. Here we find all indexes. We will see that in a minute. Okay, and here is a method that finds every entity uh, that matches uh, something in description and review. It matches or description or review. And we have we have multiple search phrases, as you will see. It's string, but uh, yeah, you, you, you'll see. I, I, I like it. How does it work? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Mm. So it all, it's all based on entity manager. Okay. Uh, Oh, yeah. uh, this one I haven't checked so well. Uh, okay, so let's start our application. It's just a traditional Spring Boot application. Just enable JPA repositories, uh, configuration, yeah, everything should work just fine. And yeah, what have you heard here? Okay. Okay, and as you see, there is a, a log about mass indexing, and we indexed f five entities. And in our Elasticsearch, there should be yeah. In our Elasticsearch, we should see yeah that we have a new index, and there should be five uh, different books. Uh, I've also written some, uh, yeah, I'll just let me refresh that, some controllers to, yeah, to give you a hint how does it look. Uh, I don't go through, uh, yeah, mapping controllers and everything like that, you, you know how it works. 
Mm, and at the start, let's get all books we have in our uh, Elasticsearch database. How is it stored? Okay. So, okay. Uh, these are real books I've, uh, yeah, I've taken the descriptions and titles and authors from one of the sites. Uh, the most popular ones and, and some about programming. So as you see, it's a, a document, uh, it's not a SQL entity, and we have title, we have description, and we have authors that are nested inside uh, this book. And yeah, these are quite uh, big texts. Uh, okay. Yeah, these are all. And if you would like to add something, then we don't have to worry about uh, adding it both to SQL and NoSQL database. You will see that it will uh, be in this list in a moment when, you, uh, when I add new books. Okay, I think that the description and And title are necessary, just this one. Okay, as or maybe I'll make it bigger. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we can add a book via this controller. Okay, server response 5000, okay. What happened? Okay, okay, I, this must be manually something wrong with the model. Uh, okay, it should be auto-generated. Uh, is it like that? I Someone remember auto generation uh, annotation? <laughs> oh, God, or we can just assign it any random ID. It will be easier, I think, for now. Mm, Five thousand, five hundred. ID. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. I don't know whether ID is mapping, so yeah, no. Uh, Generated value, yeah, was close enough. Okay, sorry about that. Identity, yeah, let's do that. How much time do we have? Nine, 11 minutes, not bad. Mm, okay, sorry, sorry. Just run it once again. And it will all be good. Okay. Okay, I think we're ready. Just execute. Yeah, and we have book not found. Okay. Oh God, 
haven't tested that at last. Oh, I, I, I think I know what is happening. That's nothing wrong. Uh, yeah. So w when you get all books now, then we should have our book, yeah, Hibernate Search demo, I love Hibernate Search. And all we had to do on, on the code side is just use traditional, here's service, I think, to handle that. Uh, just, uh, yeah, use traditional repository and save it. It's just a JPA repository and everything is taken care of. So, yeah, as you see. And, well, uh, let's do some searching. And that will be the last thing, I think, that I have to show you how it works. These so are all just a few capabilities of this tool. Uh, but we wouldn't have uh, enough time to discuss everything. Uh, so, yeah, search phrases. And uh, we've uh, had, for example, hibernate. So let's do hibernate and see whether I find it or not. Yeah, that's the only book uh, on hibernate. Uh, but for example, maybe I'd like to uh, see whether there are any books on hibernate or about programming. Then maybe let's look hibernate programming. And then we get more results as, for example, there's also Python Crash Course, second edition. And yeah, we search that by uh, searching in the description something, there must be something on programming. Yeah, there, there, there is no programming in the title, as you see. So yeah, we can, we can do that quite easily. Yeah. Okay, I would like to show you more than that, but yeah, we would have to spend all day. I really encourage you to explore this tool on your own. Uh, the documentation, I uh, have it here, uh, is really, really great. And I think this tool is really powerful and can uh, benefit you in uh, many cases. Uh, I think geolocation is really interesting uh, if you do something with this. Mm. Well, and I think that would be all. Do you have any question at all? Yeah, that's not a problem. Uh, in this in this configuration, yeah, mm, okay. Uh, in this configuration, we just do lowercase and ASCII folding, but we can also uh, remove some words, uh, for example, A, D, and so on. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we could do that here. I just don't remember which uh, comment is that. And we, I think we cannot uh, do... We could do, yeah, I, I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, we can uh, do, uh, we can analyze uh, multiple languages within one analyzer. This is a custom name that it is English. We also could, if you know that some uh, fields in your database are Polish and some database, are, some, some fields in database are English, you could also do other analyzer uh, and it isn't a problem at all. Yeah, so you would just do something like this, and then we would write uh, Polish, and then you would uh, add some other filter. There's also a possibility to write some uh, custom filters, so actually everything is possible. For example, you could, but, well, it uh, depends how much time you have and how much you want to engage. Uh, with this tool, uh, but yeah, for example, you, you could uh, exchange some words or remove some words uh, based on your dictionary somewhere, yeah. Uh, when I add new data, is it out? Yeah, yeah. As I, I've, as I have shown you, uh, if it is a question, of course, uh, I can add new book and it's uh, going through ORM and then it's indexed. And uh, this searching goes through uh, 
yeah, through Hibernate search, through Lucene query, not through uh, any SQL query. Oh, good question. I haven't uh, used such amount uh, day of data yet, so uh, it could be quite long, but usually you don't want to drop everything, so it's uh, you would probably want to update it, so just see whether there are changes in database. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's just the simplest example as I could uh, come up with. So, no more questions? Oh, yeah? Okay. Okay, so we have four minutes. Thank you very much.